Hello and welcome to my art studio and um, today we are doing a three-part video series. This is part three of how to create the piece of artwork that you have in your mind, how to make that a reality on the canvas and we are diving into the three things that you need to be able to do that. As I say this is part three so if you haven't already watched part one and part two go check that out and uh, now it, I've linked them all in the description box so you can go and watch those two videos first and then come back to this one uh, so that they all make sense basically. The first video is all about planning your art journey and kind of having an idea of where you want your painting to be because it's no good setting off on a journey if you don't know where you're going. Uh, part two is all about the art skills that you need as an artist to be able to make the idea a reality on the canvas. That was a very physical kind of like in a very physical way of the physical skill that you need. And lesson three today, we're gonna to be talking about how to critique your artwork and how to know when a painting is truly finished. Because of course that decision is what makes the final piece of course. So it's a very big part of the painting. So if that all sounds good, let's dive in. First of all, I do just want to let you know that if you would like more guidance in your painting journey, I do have a free taster session of my online painting course that you can go and watch for free, go check it out see if it's right for you and I'll pop the link in the description box and also in a comment box as well so you can go and watch that free taster session we'll be going into a lot more detail about some of the things that we're going to be discussing so yeah let's crack on with the video so we're going to be looking at critiquing your artwork and knowing when it's finished now the first thing I want to say about this topic is you are the artist I want to make sure that you feel empowered that you are the one that gets to make that decision. So if you think that a painting is finished, it doesn't matter who takes a look at it, it doesn't matter if it's your art teacher or if it's um, your spouse or a friend, if they say, mm, I think it needs this or it needs that or it's not quite finished, every single person on this planet that you ask will have a different opinion. But your opinion is the one that matters because you are the artist, you are the creator of that painting. So I am empowering you to make that decision. That's the first thing. <laughs> the second thing is it's great to set an intention of knowing when the painting is finished before you even start it. So before you start the painting, just sit for a minute and think, how will I know when this is finished? What is it I want to achieve? What, at what point, what will the point look like when I get to it that will say, I think this piece is done. And having that intention to start with will really help for you to know when you've arrived at that moment. Um, so it might be that a certain thing looks realistic. You might actually want it to look quite loose and painterly and impressionistic. And I sense that a lot of people want a more loose and impressionistic feel but they just carry on painting. They get stuck in the like <laughs> the painting like loophole um, of just adding details and adding details and adding more layers because they think that will make it look better. And then before you know it, you feel like you've overworked it. Now, I'm not really understanding the idea of the word overworked because to me, that means it should have been stopped a while ago. And really the thing we need to think about is why didn't I stop? What was it I was still trying to achieve? Sometimes we just think we'll just add paint and hope it gets better. And actually, when we think about what exactly specifically is it that this painting needs? And this is where we go back into the part two of this video series with the five core skills. We spoke about the five core skills that all artists need, but actually, it's also the five core skills that every painting needs. And that is draw, uh, well, like a good drawing, um, good values, a great composition, color harmony, and also a great technique of painting, like whether that's brush strokes uh, or how you've got the paint onto the canvas. Now each painting will need these five core skills and that's why it's so important to be able to hyper-focus on these skills individually, because then when you get to the part where you get to critique your artwork, you know exactly what it needs, you know exactly what's wrong, and you know how to fix it. I remember so often earlier in my painting journey, I would know that a piece of artwork didn't look right. I just didn't know how to fix it. I didn't know what was wrong with it. And when you don't know what's wrong, you don't know how to fix it. And that's why it's so empowering, really learning these five core individual skills. That's why I guide my students in my painting course, we guide through each of these individually. I like to think of it kind of like when you're learning to drive, you don't go straight onto a busy road and then learn how to put your lights on. 
you do that in an empty car park or an empty parking lot with pretty much no one around and then you learn how to step on the gas pedal, you learn how to turn on your lights, how to do the windscreen wipers, the indicators, and you learn all that in like an isolated way so that when you're getting onto the, the much like more intense moments or when you're on roads full of busy people, that kind of feels like second nature. You already know what you're doing there. And that's why so many people get so overwhelmed with painting because we turn up to paint and we try and do it all at once and we end up not actually doing any of it very well which then leads us to feel really discouraged and overwhelmed and um, lacking in confidence. And so in Learn to Paint with Confidence, which is my online course, we kind of go through these skills individually, hyper-focus on each one, and then we bring it all together. And that's where the confidence comes in. And that's also why it's such a huge part of being able to critique your artwork and knowing when something's finished is because now when I paint, I will be able to look at a painting and go, it's nearly there, but I need to work on the values. I need to bring in more values or less values. <laughs> or um, I need to just add a little bit of a colour tweak to make sure that the colours are harmonious. In fact, I did this in one of my recent videos. I was doing a magnolia painting and I realised that the colours um, kind of sat too heavy on, I think, I think I had like a lot of pinks and blues and I realised it was so heavy on this side that I needed to like balance it with a colour from this side. So I just took my colour wheel and kind of made like a colour that I think it sat around here to balance out this blue and pink. So it, it felt harmonious and the colours felt harmonious. Now that's like anything, when you've got the knowledge of how to remedy it, then it doesn't feel stressful. It feels like a part of the process. It doesn't even feel like anything went wrong. It just feels like little steps and tweaks along the journey of that painting that makes it what it is in the end. And that's why um, it's so relaxing when you know these skills, when you understand those skills, because you don't then have to go through that whole roller coaster of emotions of like, oh, I love this artwork. Oh, it's gone terrible. I don't know how to fix it. Panic, let's add more paint. Oh, now I'm starting to like it a bit better. And then I always used to get also scared of adding more. You know, when you like really love the part of your painting, I used to get scared to do any more to it because I'm like, I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin it. So I'd end up just leaving it as it was, even though it wasn't finished, I didn't feel like it was finished. I was just too scared to add anything in case I lost that aspect that I loved. When you understand these five core skills, you're not in danger of doing that because you know what it is you like about it. So then you just leave that part untouched. And um, so if you love the composition, that's okay. Like you don't have to change the composition or, you know, if you love the color harmony, you can just keep on using those colors, but you have to understand which part it is and, and understand that skill in isolation to be able to then not change it. If that makes any sense at all. <laughs> so um, yeah, I kind of hope that's been interesting to kind of see that from a bird's eye view. This is why part one and part two are so important because that's what makes this part easier. If we have planned our painting, if we've got our compositions ready, we've got our values ready, we've got our color stories ready. If we've got all that ready and planned for the painting, then we shouldn't be running into those problems at the point where it's nearly finished. And if we are, it's okay because we understand what the initial intention was and we can make the changes to bring it back to that original intention. If we didn't have a plan, if we didn't have an intention, we're kind of just like fumbling around in the dark, adding bits to our painting, hoping that it will just magically look better. Most of the time doesn't work because I've been there and tried that <laughs> about 10 years ago and uh, kind of muddled my way through this process. And that's how I know that this process works because I've spent my own time doing it and now it's the process I help other students go through as well. So I really hope that you enjoyed that and kind of got a bird's eye view of how to gain the skills, how to gain that confidence into creating a painting that you really, really love. So I really hope that you enjoyed that video series. Let me know in the comments if there's anything particular that you are really struggling with, or if there's anything in this lesson that was like a light bulb moment, like a, aha, that kind of might be why it's not working for me or anything like that. Just let me know in the comments. I love getting that feedback on the videos of if it's even helping and how it's helping, because that helps me make videos that I know are gonna actually help you guys out there. So thank you so much. Don't forget if you would like to have a little bit more guidance in this area, then feel free to join the taster session for Learn to Paint with Confidence where we go through each of those five skills um, a lot more in detail. So thank you so much. Hope you have a beautiful, inspiring day wherever you are. Bye.